Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Open Computers Challenge. This is MCSH and well, I have some good news and some bad news. Um, in the last episode, I had some footage loss. So uh, we actually, uh, I used Gladys to build a whole other room there. You can see the remaining of there. I just went out and uh, mined them. But uh, because I, ju I just lost the footage and uh, I wanted to do that on camera. So uh, I didn't load a backup save, but I reverted the uh, building by hand. And we also cut up uh, a few of the trees there, but I think we got that on camera. So anyway, um, in this episode, we are going to actually build uh, that part of the house with Gladys and then um, yeah let's see what happens to them okay so let's look at the code um, in the beginning we're just requiring some of the functions like we usually do and then um, we are defining a path this is supposed to take us to the um, behind the log in the house so basically it's going to take us there behind that log and um, so we move out of the house we take this path and then uh, we repeat something five times basically each uh, for each row we repeat these moves and uh, these moves they we repeat five times again so we are making five rows of five blocks because in each move we are placing down one block and we are moving forward and then we are turning left, going forward, turning left, going forward five blocks, and then turning around. So this will take us to the beginning of the next row. We repeat this process five times. So we've created uh, five rows of the floor. Then we go to where we started, and then we reverse this path, and we go home. So that should be how we're going to do it. Okay, but let's see if it works in practice as well and okay we will also go to the spectator mode okay you see it places on five blocks goes back to the beginning of the next row All right, so uh, I think we had a bug in our code. Um, probably we should have turned around instead of turning right because we ended up in the wrong place. And uh, that's a problem I'm going to try to fix uh, in this episode. Because, uh, let's move Gladys back. Uh, because um, because we are converting the path by hand, um, we are probably introducing some bugs in the code, and uh, those bugs are causing Gladys to not be able to return to home. And uh, let's look at the code exactly. So uh, we made a mistake here because I was trying to undo what we did in these four loops. Now. Uh, we did create a reverse uh, function that would convert the original path to another one that would uh, basically undo it, but we cannot uh, execute reverse on the code like this because there is no uh, command that that's going to take us to there. It's just a series of commands instead. Okay, so what we need to do is create an internal state for our machine so that the machine can keep track of where it is going and uh, so that when we ask it to go back it can just do it for us and uh, yeah and this idea uh, was from the YouTube of the previous episode uh, YouTube comments of the previous episode I think Shayan uh, mentioned this and so yeah we're going to 
try to do that. Okay, so um, we have to introduce some state machine uh, to the move function. Uh, let's look at it really quickly here. So it's in our move file over here and down here. Right. So uh, we currently have a callback here. The callback uh, actually uh, is a function that the system calls whenever there is something wrong, right? So it would, uh, like when you cannot move forward, when uh, something is blocking the path, when we have an error or whatever kind it might be, we just go ahead and call the callback, inform them that there was this error, please help us, do something. Now, we kind of need to do something similar here, um, but instead of it being a callback, we need to call a state machine. We need to basically preserve a state, right? And uh, yeah, so we added, we added a new argument to the move function called state and the state can be nil if it's nil we don't mind we just create a new one if a state is nil then state is a uh, move that create a state right And uh, in the end, we're going to return our state after everything is done. Okay? And uh, so far, the move command doesn't return anything. Right? The, uh, is it move or act? The act command isn't returning anything. So we're going to add an act, uh, add a, sorry, a state here as well. And then um, down here, we would just say return state. Okay. Yes. So this helps us to keep track of a state. So uh, someone is passing us a state. We just we process it and then we give it to the uh, move function here. The move function. Um, does up update the state somehow? I don't know how, but it's going to update it somehow. After that, uh, it's just going to return it. And uh, another update that we have to do is we have to update the callback. The callback should also return this, uh, should get the state in case they need it, and then they should also return it when they've done their thing on it, right? Yeah. Okay, next uh, we actually have to implement it on the callbacks. So you're going to get a state and then um, you're going to return the state. And whenever you're going to act, you're going to pass the state there. All right? Yes. Here as well, here as well. and here so now we have a variable that's being passed to all of the act functions that we we are calling anywhere we're calling act we're just passing the state to there as well now uh we actually have to implement the a state the um create a state function and that's going to be straightforward we're just going to go ahead and say um move that create state is a function doesn't get anything uh, it's going to return something but for now we're just going to say it's going to return the empty uh, dictionary and yeah I also think that uh, maybe the state should be the second parameter instead of the third one that makes more sense to me because we might omit the callback, but we usually don't want to omit this state. 
all right? Okay, so about the state. Uh, when we wrote the reverse function, let me bring it here, then do this, okay? Uh, we kept four different states here. We kept the x, y, z, and the orientation. We're just going to assume that the state has those variables as well. So I'm going to say x, uh, I forgot the syntax, it's equal, okay. So x begins with 0, y begins with 0, z begins with 0, and uh, o begins with 0 as well, right? And uh, do I have to end it with a comma? Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah. Then we have to update this function. So in order to update it, uh, we actually wrote a code that would update it for us. And I'm just going to extract this piece of code into another function and use that. So I'm going to say uh, we have a, a state updater dot Lua. It's a function that takes in a state and a um, word, right? And just updates the state and return it. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. So it's just going to be basically uh, these down here. Just going to repeat them. Okay, so I'm going to say if the word is you, then we have to increase the z value. So it would be plus num. Let's get a num as well. And then else if the word is down, then again, we're going to decrease that value. If the word is turn left, then we're going to say state that O is state that O minus num. And then of course, we're going to uh, calculate the reminder of that by four because we don't have more than four orientations. So if you don't remember, we have we assume that we have four orientations. We have um, forward that the the default orientation is zero. So uh, zero would be this way. Then one would be this way. Two would be down, and three would be left. So whenever we turn left, we just decrease that. Basically, we are facing this way. We turn left, we will face this way. Okay. Um, so we just we're just going to update the where we are looking at, and I'm just going to repeat that same process for right. But instead of minus, we have a plus here, and the same process for turning around. Oh, actually. Do you see this? This is a bug. Yeah. When we turn around, we need to do this. Basically, because you're yeah. This is what's this is what caused the but to not be able to find where it came from. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we have to solve it here as well so then uh, we have to do word turn around then our state would be two times num then we're just going to do the reminder finally if the word is forward then
Okay, so it's basically the same code over there. I'm just going to repeat it again. And the orientation is going to be plus two modulus four. Right, so uh, we just have to copy the uh, move oriented function here as well, like that. Um, you also have to export this function. Uh, what seems to be the problem here? And expected to close function. Oh, we didn't. Yeah, okay. Right, we had, we, I forgot to put an end for the if a statement there. Right, and then um, I actually think we need to use this updating function in the reverse, but that's going to be too complicated uh, at this moment, so I'm not going to do it right now, but we have, that's uh, in our to-do list. So let's go to the move function and uh, we have to Im import that local state updater right and then here we're just going to so if it was successful just call the state Okay, yeah. Uh, right. I think we also need to do, uh, like, we need to remove this just in case it is loaded. So I'm going to say package.loaded. Um, state updater is nail so that I force it to reload but yeah um, so with all that this function we, we need to create a new state so we say that local state is move that create state then we pass it to this function we capture it here we pass it to the next function, right? Then again, we capture it here. And then we capture it here again. Right. And then we do it again. And again. And again, wow. Right, and then, um, yes, so this is going to be how we operate our robot. We're just going to call crazy state and then just try that. But uh, in order to test it, let's just start with something easier. I'm going to create a new function called test2.lua, again, with all of these in place. So I'm going to say move that move just go forward one block without any states and then print it and see what happens okay all right so reloading the Gladys just in case and then Lua source test to that Lua okay so there was a error there Somewhere, no file, lib, lib, state updater. Okay, so we are having a problem in one of our imports. Oh, of course we have a problem. Right. Okay. 
Okay, what if I just do this? That's weird. What's the name of the file? Oh, because, yeah, I shouldn't put that Lua in front of that. Okay. So it came forward and it printed that thing. Uh, all right. So. Let's close this source test two. Okay. Now I want you to go back and instead of printing that, I'm going to ask you to print state that X and uh, the same thing for Y, Z and O. Okay. So if I print that, you can see that the X is minus one because it went back uh, one block. So now if I say, oh, sorry. If I say go forward one block, then up, then turn right, and then uh, what should we say? Maybe forward another time. Okay, we can see that all of the attributes are one because it is uh, one block this way, one block this way, and one block up. So, yeah, we figured it out. So, that's good to hear. I'm just going to say reverse this to go back to where you were. And then we can implement the... Oh! Mm. Okay. Attempt to index local state a function value. Okay, I'm glad that we encountered the error, but let's see what this is all about. So, uh, I did not pass it the state. And it told me while trying to run D, got the error solid, right? Then in the I set up with the Lua line 18. State updater line 18. It's got a function here. Huh. Now that's weird. This is the same as every other piece of line, so we have probably made a mistake. Here, so this is fine. Oh, maybe maybe this one, maybe this is the problem. How is the handler working? Is it returning the state at the end? It is. Oh, it's because we, you see, we have to push put the state here. Because it's a move function, I forgot about that. Okay, and then this is act. Do we have any other move here? Right. Okay, that should fix it. Let's go to the uh, test file. Right. Uh, I actually think that's enough. Um, let me just do this so uh, you need to turn right forward turn right forward and then turn right again okay so turn right forward turn right forward and then turn right again and uh, on that okay and yeah so the orientation is changed uh, it's now facing the third direction comparing to where it started and then minus one and plus one So yeah, so the state is working and that's a good news But how can we 
Uh, I also need to put down my bed again. And there are monsters nearby, okay. Right. So now we need to basically reverse the state based off of these uh, things here. And uh, the good news is we, we already have the function to do that in our, our reverse file. So we just we know what we are going to do, right? This is the file. This is uh, what we're going to do. We just have to implement it. So I'm going to create a new file called reverse state dot lua. I'm going to create a new function called reverse state, and it's going to take a state, right, and output a path. Right? So the path, uh, well, let's change the name to ants so that we have the same name here. It's a local variable. And then I'm just going to basically copy and paste this part. Right? Yeah. And, uh, we need the local variables x, which is state at x. We need the local variable z. We need the local variable y. And oh, and is that correct? Yeah. Fantastic. So now we can uh, test this. So reverse state and reverse state and uh, reverse state. Okay, so you've done that. Now, can you reverse state this? Uh, reverse state the state. Can you do that? So this should uh, create a file for us and just let's uh, print it as well here. Okay, so this function uh, takes this state into the account and then creates a path like this for us and we use that path to tell the system that uh, you know we want to go back to where we were previously okay and I'm going to change this one uh, you go forward once you go up you go forward another time you also turn right okay and see what happens right so Lua source Lua source test two. Attempt to call local reverse state and I value. Okay. Uh, of course, because I have to return this. Right. So for now, let's reverse this here. So the bot should go there and then come back here. All right. Yeah, that was that was perfect, right? Um, just so we can ensure that everything is working correctly, let's try. Let's try it from the beginning. So, um, like this. So, we are telling it to go to this path, you know, keep the state, then reverse it. Right? And let's see what happens. So, do it.
perfect. That was actually perfect. So we did everything that we asked it to do. Okay, so I think the episode has become longer than I, I anticipated it to be. And uh, we got a lot done. Gladys can now keep track of the state and we don't need to worry about reversing the path ourselves because we can just call the reverse function on the state. And that's a really good news. I, I really enjoy that. So in the next episode, we can hopefully finish the room next door because I badly need more leg space. This is this is so cramped up. Look at this. I, I just I can't even do like I can't even run around. It's you know I need room to exercise. And thank you for watching guys. I really enjoy um creating these videos and I hope that you do enjoy watching them too. Do let me know if you have any ideas or questions. I read the comments and uh especially if you leave them in the YouTube chats. Uh some of you guys reach out to me in Telegram or Twitter. That's fun. That's fine too, but uh, keep doing it. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye-bye.